Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Taylor, and in today's video, we're going to be doing a short throw shifter install in my C6Z06. So let's go ahead and check it out. This is my car. This is a 2007 C6Z06. I picked this up in October of 2019, and I have a bunch of videos in my playlist of this car. And if you'll notice, there's also another C6Z06 over here. My dad actually liked this car, my car, so much that he went out and bought his own. This is an 08 car, so it does have a TR6060 transmission, and a couple little odds and ends changed within that one model year, but essentially the same car. And anyways, one thing we're gonna do today is changing the shifter. And the reason why is because the factory shifter has a ton of throw. Um, it's just kind of not the best feeling shifting the car, so we're gonna actually going to be installing a Hurst billet short throw shifter setup in the car. So let's go ahead and unbox that real quick and then we'll get into everything that happens inside the car. All right guys, this is the Hurst shifter here. It's their billet plus shifter kit. It fits all C6 manual transmission cars. So this will work on anything from a base model up to a ZR1 because everything is essentially the same on all those cars. You got your instructions here and then just real simple. You've got a just a billet uh, tower mount here essentially. Looks like a little greased up shank at the bottom with like a little ball and socket type of deal. Some hardware along with some Loctite. So let's go ahead and cut this out of the package real quick. All right, so here it is. Really feels like a high quality piece. That's my first impression of it, getting it out of the box here. Very simple. These cars have a torque tube in them and the transmission is actually mounted in the back of the car. The transmission is actually like behind the driver's seat. Anyways, the shifter is mounted to the torque tube and it has arms that actuate the transmission in the back of the car. And that's why this is so simple because we're basically just changing the point at which the shifter meets the shift forks, which go back. All right, guys, we're in the passenger seat of the car here just to give you a little better idea. Somebody at some point put this big Corvette uh, white shift knob on it. I've always liked the classic Hurst white style shift knobs, except this one is like gigantic. It really feels like a handful. So I actually like the, the stock shifter in these cars. They're a little more ergonomical. I might go back to a stock one, uh, we'll see. But as you can tell here, this is what we're gonna be addressing today. And that is the amount of throw in the gear. So this is neutral here. This is third and then fourth. So that's like probably three to four inches of throw there. So we're going to vastly improve that today and it should really give the car a nice feeling, especially in high performance driving where you're shifting the car quickly. This is just a little clunky when you're trying to shift fast. So the hearse should be a nice upgrade. Step one to this project is going to be removing these T15 Torx head screws that go into the console door. Once we get the console door off, I will show you the next step. The next step is to remove this parking brake boot. It simply just kind of pops up. There are just some simple little clips here that hold it to the console. So let's see if we can get this thing out. There we go. So that pops up real easy. I'm gonna slide this off, but just to give you an idea, these are what the clips look like underneath there. All right, so I got the shift boot off, and these are just, a, again, another closer look at how those clips are oriented. They're meant to pop out, so if you're feeling like you're being too rough with it, just remember that uh, they are clips and they do just pop right out of there. So with enough pressure, they do come out, and then you do have to pull it off of the handle as well. So I'm gonna throw that back there. The next thing we have to remove are these two screws right here. I believe those are seven millimeters. So I'm gonna go grab a seven mil for those real quick. So these are those seven mils. We're gonna remove these real quick and then get on to the next step. Basically, all these do is uh, they're just an anchor for this whole trim panel right here. So we're gonna be unclipping this in just a few moments. Open the glove box a little here so you can see there are two retaining clips that hold the front of this plastic panel up and we've already got it loose back here. I apologize for the flashing light. My little light is almost dead but let's see if we can pop this thing out. There's one and two. Uh, let's see. All right, got 
cut that out and we didn't break it either. I was kind of worried about that. So you can see how those clips work there. Real simple. Next step is to remove this little cover here. Again, another item that just holds in with clips. So we've got a little flathead screwdriver. Didn't mark it up or anything. You can see those two clips under there and then just like a little tab that slides in up here. And this reveals two more seven millimeter screws, which are right in here. So we're gonna go ahead and back these out now as well. All right, at this point, we have all the bolts removed from this trim panel here. And I did read something in the directions about removing this back half of the console, which I'm gonna just try not to do because I don't see why it actually needs to come out. Uh, so anyways, next step is going to be removing this shift knob so that we can get the shift boot out over it in one piece. As you can see here, this is already pulled up and uh, starting to already kind of unclip from the rest of this here. So once we get this shift knob out of the way, I think this whole thing will just come up and out of here. Looks like there's just an Allen head on the side. We've got the little Allen head out of the side of the knob, slips right up. And then with any luck, we're gonna get this whole thing out. Um, I'm actually gonna use two hands to do this. So I will uh, show you this when it's all pulled out. So I've got this whole panel out just so you can visualize this a little bit better. This was, let me see here. My car has a little aux cord thing inside of the uh, cigarette lighter area. So that's what that is there. Heated seat for the passenger side, heated seat for the driver's side if you have heated seats. And then over here is where your traction control stuff is. I'm actually just gonna leave these plugged in and just flop it right over here just so I don't have to tamper with more plugs. But uh, now we've got access to our shifter here. I'm going to remove this little sound deadening thing right here. It's just like a little insulator. So now that we get this out of the way, we can pull it up and over the factory little shifter here, like so. And now we've got access to what looks like another little rubber thing that is actually connected to plastic. So these look like some 10 millimeter nuts that we'll have to remove to actually get to the shifter itself down there. Got all of the 10 mils off of here and this just kind of pries up. It's a little dirty, I'll clean that before I put it back in. Get that out of the car. And then here we, so this is really where all the action is and you can see the actuation of the shifter there. So earlier I kind of misspoke and said, when I said that there were shift forks, there's basically a little shift rod here. And this rod, as you can see, it spins one way or the other and goes back and forth um, like so. And basically the mixture of it turning and going forward or back and so on and so forth, you know, puts it in whatever gear that we are selecting. Probably didn't do the best job explaining that just now, but you get what I'm talking about. Here is the factory shifter. Let's put it outside the car so you can see it better. There's a little plastic clip on the bottom, which go, it's basically a socket for that ball and socket looking thing at the bottom that we saw in the new Hearst shifter. And then there's this little pin at the front, which you can see there. That pin is gonna remove from the stock assembly and push right down into this hole right here. Here is a comparison of the old shifter, the factory one, and the Hearst shifter. And obviously there's a very large difference here. This is a really nice substantial piece. And then this is just kind of a dinky, flimsy little thing. Anyways, this is a pretty nice shifter here. And we've already installed the little shift cup that goes on the bottom. This is like a ball and socket design which rides inside of the selector on the torque tube. So we've already got that transferred over. And then in regard to some adjustability with this, there are shift stops front and back on this. And basically in the directions it says to remove those if you know not desired. I'm gonna put this in the car and see how it feels first before tampering with anything. And then if you see these two uh, adjusters here, those are actually for tension on the springiness back and forth of the shifter. And obviously it's not in the car yet. I don't know how it's gonna feel. They also provide additional springs for, you know, to achieve optimal, you know, user preference for how springy the return is of that shifter. Might not be something I even get into. And then this Loctite is actually for Loctiting 
those so those little adjusters so all the stuff that we're going to be doing right now is just putting this new plastic gasket in and then this is all the hardware we'll be using to actually fasten this to the car so let's go ahead and do it as you can see i cleaned this surface here and basically i just used a scotch bright pad and then wiped it down with a little acetone so we got all that old gasket material off so i will show you this gasket which literally just flops right on like so and then the shifter this is important to note there's a part of the shifter that's uh, machined flat on the front in the threads and then the angle sweeps backward we are going to install it just like that so it presses in and then uh, i'll do a little off-camera work to align this properly all right we're getting these fastened down and one thing i thought i'd mention the billet base actually has a couple of little machined uh, recessed areas where the head of the allens go through and that ensures that this thing is aligned perfectly over the torque tube there so this uh, is really really a nice piece so it says eight to ten pound feet in the directions and I'm just kind of going by feel honestly all the way around so I've just got one more to, to kind of snug down and then I'll go through and tighten the rest all the way and then we'll kind of see what this thing feels like um, with the preset springs and the shift stops all right guys we got this all snug down I'm gonna slide the knob on real quick just to see how this all kind of feels oh that's wow oh my gosh guys what an improvement this is unbelievable how nice this is this feels so much better I can't even believe it this is cool okay Honestly, I don't really mind any of the adjustment in this so far, so I think that I'm just going to leave it as is. I am really impressed. This feels great, and we obviously haven't driven the car yet, but um, let's do a comparison from the other side of the car of the throw between these two things. Look at that. The leverage is much better, too, um, so the shift feels a little more effortless. But man, this this is really nice. That just cleaned the car up so much. Really, maybe two inches of throw. So we improved this by a dramatic amount. I mean, this is really a nice feeling shifter now. So let's go ahead. I'm not gonna bore you with the reassembly of all this stuff. Um, I will show you one thing that you do have to modify when you're putting all this back together and then I'll catch up with you when the car is completely assembled. This is the one piece that you're going to have to modify when putting this back together and that is this little rubber isolator here. As you can see the base of the shifter is much larger than the previous stock shifter so you do have to cut this out a little bit to fit over it and um, honestly it looks like I'll have to cut out this whole entire raised area with a box knife so I'm gonna do that real quick and then I'll show you this put together all right guys here is what I was talking about we've got this rubber boot cut and I didn't actually have to cut this whole raised area off I just kind of made an incision right in the center of it and cut all the way around pretty evenly so that fits well enough just like that we are all buttoned up and back together got pretty much everything reinstalled just as it came apart and uh, I've got to say, the feeling of this shifter is so improved over the stock one. It's really incredible. So I cannot wait to go out and drive this thing. Um, but we're going to end the video there today. One last thing that I want to mention is the reinstall of your console lid. There is actually a little bit of adjustment to be had here with these screws. So when I first screwed this back together, it didn't want to latch properly. So I had to scoot it back a little bit so that this little striker would line up with this hole. So now everything is snug as it should be. And again, just look at the throw of this thing. It is substantially shorter than before. I'd say it's got to be 50% of the throw that it used to be with the stock shifter. All right guys, well I really hope that you enjoyed today's video and uh, if you're installing a shifter in your car, hopefully you found this helpful. I really love the feeling of that Hearst shifter and I've had good luck with Hearst in the past. It's a company that's been around since the 50s or 60s, since the original muscle car era, so they've been around and know how to build a proper shifter. Um, but anyways, that is just one item on the long list of things that are going to get done to the car this year. And um, obviously all of that will be documented here on the channel. 
As always, guys, if you enjoyed today's video, please give it a big thumbs up for me and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more automotive content like you saw here today. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys next video.